welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm just here to present my orchids in bloom at the moment. Most of them are in my little intro segment because I'm new to YouTube. Uh, but we'll start with uh, this little Oncidium type. It's a Bellara Matthias Variation Glamour. Um, and I am in love with this orchid. It's got the most beautiful, stunning petals and especially that lip with the yellow uh, center and the spotty detail and the frilly edge of the lip. Um, it's also got really pretty petals which are spotted as well uh, and have a sort of faded magenta look to them. I'm really in love with these flowers. Um, the plant itself is pretty healthy. It's got a new growth coming out there. It came to me with a very small spike um, and uh, developed the buds in my care, uh, but I haven't repotted it yet. Um, absolutely in love with those blooms though, and they smell like flowers. <laughs> they don't have a strong or offensive smell at all, but nothing to write home about. They just smell floral. Next we have another Oncidium type orchid. We've got the Miltasia Charles M. Fitch, and I call him my pink spider. He's got these long brassier type uh, petals and they're pink and spotty and just really cute. Um, and the lip sort of fades out into a light pink and it's also got a few little spots on it. Um, and the flowers are fragrant. They smell a lot like pepper and I'm not sure if it's a fragrance uh, that I love but it's certainly quite unique um, and the flowers are just so beautiful and big uh, that I'll forgive the fragrance. But I got it from an orchid show a couple of months ago. It had two big spikes on it which had fallen and this little one was developing at the time. It's quite a vigorous grower and quite a big plant actually. It's got three or four new growths at the moment. So I think when I go to repot it, I will probably split this orchid and give part of it to someone special. So yeah, um, a really nice plant if you ever come across it and like the look of uh, the flowers and like pepper, I guess. And here we have one of my favourites, it's my beautiful No ID Papiopetalum and my very first Papiopetalum to bloom. Uh, I, I just adore these flowers. Look at that massive pouch and it's so bulky and weird and the front of the petals are really shiny and reflective and that upper petal just has the most dramatic pattern. It's like this hat that flops over the pouch and it's got this beautiful magenta spotty pattern that runs up it. Um, the back of the flower and the ovary and the stalk are furry, like they feel fuzzy and bizarre and I just find it adorable. Look at all that there in the middle what the hell is that it's so weird but I absolutely love it it's literally got little hairs all over it um, but yeah um, I'm in love with the papier petalums and I bought like three more last month and my Oncidium twinkle is finally in bloom it first shot out a spike six months ago so I have been waiting very patiently for six months for nine flower spikes to develop and they've been branching and growing and branching and growing and finally six months later it's in bloom and not even fully in bloom uh, was it worth it yes but very very frustrating as well um, the flowers themselves are fragrant. It is called the fragrant fantasy variety. And I'm not sure how to describe the smell, but it is uh, perfumey and sweet uh, and quite strong. It can fill the room, uh, even with only this many flowers. 
Um, and the flowers themselves are really small, they're tiny actually, um, and they kind of look like little birds. This is a white variety, um, but I think it's going to look really good once all the flowers open up. This is my Dendrobium Temesuk Princess. Um, it's a really simple but beautiful Phalaenopsis type Dendrobium, really easy grower, um, not fussy at all, just needs um, typical Dendrobium conditions, uh, nice and moist while growing, um, lots of warmth and lots of sun and it's done brilliantly and this is the first blooming for it and it's thrown out a good number of flowers and they're really vibrant pink with a little bit of a greenish tinge in the center um, and it's one of my favorites at the moment actually it's really pretty um, and because it was just such a joy to grow I really love it and next to the dendrobium we have my pink phalaenopsis that my grandma donated to me earlier this year um, she has the most ridiculous blooms they are absolutely massive um, and they just get bigger as the rest of the spike opens up and you can see it spans almost the entire length of my hand it's about 12 centimeters across so nearly five inches um, and the inner petals really do look like a moth like a butterfly they're really big um, and all the petals glisten in the sun, they shimmer. The lip uh, has this yellow spotty center and it's got a darker sort of uh, lip that comes down and two little sort of antenna that uh, curl up. The plant itself was in fairly okay condition when I got it. I repotted it into liquor and it's in a sort of semi-hydro setup but the leaves are really um, strong and well hydrated so yeah it pretty much chucked out a spike as soon as I got it. Very very stunning orchid. Next we've got my little cat layer that I got the other week which is um, has opened two blooms now, one to go. Uh, Sin Boo Lady, Variation Red Beauty. Uh, and this is the first blooming for her. Um, so the but it was in bud during transport and you can see one of the flowers is opened up upside down. I don't know how that happened, but there you go, that one's upside down. Um, the other one's the right way up. It's a pretty uniform, bright pink red, um, so very dark pink, um, almost like a fuchsia type color with a yellow, um, central part of the frilly lip um, and one more bud to open but yeah pretty flowers and here we have Phalaenopsis allura a variation Vesuvius um, and I was expecting a bit more yellow around the edges of those petals but it's still a very beautiful waxy bloom I think it's going to be a sequential bloomer um, and it's got another flower spike behind it at the moment now this is a fragrant Phalaenopsis and it smells divine. It changes scent. In the morning it's like this spicy grassy scent and then by early evening it's changed to something so much sweeter. It almost smells like um, a cinnamony sweet, like a cinnamon donut but maybe not that sweet. It's really really nice um, but yeah hopefully I think uh, the flowers will be different in summer and next we've got my epidendrum tiny valley here um, it's got three flower spikes and two of them are blooming at the moment and this must be one of my favorite flowers um, I just love the epidendrums if they didn't take up so much space I'd totally have more of them but you know, I don't have enough space to put more of them. Uh, but the flowers are like this ridiculous yellow um, that glistens in the sun and the lip is upside down and it looks like a little bird with pink dots on it and 
it's the cutest thing ever. So it's got heaps and heaps of little flowers that come out and form almost like a sphere of flowers. Um, and slowly the flowers on this first bud have been, you can see the colors faded out a little bit, the flowers are slowly been dropping off, but then as the old flowers drop off, the new flowers which are forming in the center of the flower stalk then start to open. It's just magnificent. This is my first epidendrum. Um, well, I only have two um, and one seedling, but I am so impressed with this. Um, and I've got this second epidendrum here, which uh, is in spike. So I can't wait to see what this one looks like. And last but not least is my Dendrobium kingianum, which has just started opening up its blooms, still lots of buds left to go um, to open up, but really tiny, cute flowers. Uh, they've got shimmery white petals with a magenta sort of lip, um, which is patterned and has a little stripe down the middle. It's also fragrant during the day and smells quite strongly of sweet jasmine like jasmine mixed with honey and it is really strong um, I really like the fragrance but if you didn't like the fragrance it could be a bit overpowering uh, but the flowers are so cute I think it's a really lovely orchid um, this one does need a dry winter's rest uh, it is an Australian dendrobium and it lives really well in my outdoor conditions. <laughs> Yet we're in Australia, there is a flip-flop on the balcony, I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, it's um, I basically just kept it outside, reduced the watering in winter, gave it pretty strong sunlight during the year and it bloomed really easily for me. And now just before I go, I wanted to show you, I'm not sure if you noticed while I had um, the, the camera on him before but there's a little mealy bug there if you have never seen a mealy bug before they kind of look like little cotton um, things with antennas and they like to eat your flowers and nice soft fleshy parts of your orchids so you can get rid of him with a little swab uh, with some alcohol or hydrogen peroxide on it they just melt away but I just thought I'd show you Okay guys, um, thanks for joining me today. I thought I'd just leave you here with a couple of my other orchids which are in bloom. This one's the How We Are A Love Burst and it's the first flower spike for this little one. Um, but he is just a tiny little orchid. I'm in love with these little mini oncidians. They're just so tough and flower so readily. Um, and the other one's my Catlayer Intermedia who um, I haven't seen the blooms for, so very excited about that one. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you all next time. Bye.